Welcome back to State of the Union. I'm Jake Tapper. Former Vice President Joe Biden has just responded to an article by a former Nevada state lawmaker. Assemblywoman Lucy Flores says before a campaign event in 2014, the vice president stood behind her backstage, smelled her hair, kissed the back of her head. Flores writes that made her feel, quote, uneasy, gross and confused, unquote. In a statement out just moments ago, the former vice president says he's given countless handshakes and hugs on the campaign trail, quote, and quote, not once, never did I believe I acted inappropriately. If it is suggested I did so, I will listen respectfully, but it was never my intention, unquote. Joining me now is former Nevada state lawmaker Lucy Flores. Um, Assemblywoman Flores, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, let's, go back to that, let's go back to that day in November 2014. Uh, the, the Vice President Biden has come to Nevada for a campaign event. You're running for lieutenant governor. You're both backstage waiting to go on stage. What happened next? Well, it happened also suddenly. We, it's, you know, anyone who's ever been at a rally recognizes that there is just chaos. There's a lot of energy that everyone's running back and forth. Um, Eva Longoria was there. We were all lined up next to the stage. Eva was in front of me. Joe Biden was behind me. I'm kind of preparing myself to give these remarks. It's the very last days before the election. And uh, very unexpectedly and out of nowhere, I feel Joe Biden put his hands on my shoulders, get up very close to me from behind, lean in, smell my hair, and then plant a slow kiss on the top of my head. And that in and of itself might not sound like it's a very serious thing. That in and of itself might sound like it was innocent and well-intentioned. But in the context of it, as a person that had absolutely no relationship with him afterwards, as a candidate who was preparing to make my case for why I should be elected, elected the second in command of that state, to have the vice president of the United States do that to me so unexpectedly and just kind of out of nowhere. It was just shocking. It was shocking because you don't expect that kind of intimate behavior. You don't expect that kind of intimacy from someone so powerful and someone who you just have no relationship whatsoever to to touch you and to feel you and to be so close to you in that way. So I frankly just didn't even know how to react. I was just shocked. I, I felt I felt powerless. I felt like I couldn't move. I I just didn't even know how to process it. And my bigger point that I've been making is that in these power dynamic situations and and women are subjected to this in in the political setting but in work settings all the time that you just kind of process it and then you move on because you have a job to do and frankly what do you say who do you tell who do you it, there just isn't really a mechanism to deal with it and and so that's what i did i went on and i uh made my case and campaigned and and frankly then went on with my life because again what do you do so vice president biden uh and his team just released a statement just moments ago uh, from uh, Mr. Biden. Here's what it says, quote, in my many years on the campaign trail and in public life, I have offered countless handshakes, hugs, expressions of affection, support and comfort. And not once, never did I believe I acted inappropriately. If it is suggested I did so, I will listen respectfully, but it was never my intention. We have arrived at an important time when women feel they can and should relate their experiences and men should pay attention. And I will, unquote. What's your response? Well, I certainly think that it's better than his first statement um, that they released on Saturday. I'm glad that he's willing to listen. I'm, I'm glad that he is clarifying his intentions. Frankly, my point was never about his intentions and they shouldn't be about his intentions. It should be about the women on the receiving end of that behavior. And this isn't the first time and it wasn't the only incident where he was acting inappropriately with women. If he is saying that he never believed that that was inappropriate, then frankly, I think that's a little bit of a disconnect and and um, not being aware, mm -hmm. a very sense of of not being aware because there has been documentation, both in photos, videos, stories that were written. Now, that being said, I think that part of the reason why I decided to finally say something is because those behaviors were not being taken very seriously. They mm -hmm. were not being considered from the perspective of the woman on the other side of that power dynamic, on the side of, of on the receiving end. And 
I, I just can't imagine that there was never a situation where someone said to him, Vice President, Mr. Vice President, you're, you probably should stop doing that. You mm -hmm. should probably stop touching women in that way. You should probably keep your hands to yourself. So Assemblywoman Flores, you write in the piece that you wrote for The Cut um, that you, you know that people might accuse you of being politically motivated here. Um, we should point out you supported Bernie Sanders in 2016, running for president. He's running again. You attended a Beto O'Rourke campaign event yesterday. You've told us that you haven't endorsed any candidate uh, yet. You haven't decided who you want to support. But how would you respond to somebody out there who says she's attending a Beto rally, she supported Bernie in 2016? Politics might be at least partially motivating you here. What would you tell those people? I would say politics was definitely the impetus. The reason why we're having these conversations about Vice President Joe Biden is because he's considering running for president. And frankly, the reason why I felt so compelled to finally say something was because over the years, as this behavior was documented, as it was frankly dismissed by the media and not taken seriously, that conversation was not coming up in the discussions about whether or not he would uh, in a, in a complete analysis of his, of his history, of his record, of, as we go through the vetting process for all of these candidates, that important aspect was being left out. Mm -hmm. And it was being dismissed and it wasn't being acknowledged. And, and for me, that was one, incredibly offensive, and two, I think really speaks to the fact that when behavior isn't considered, uh, quote unquote, serious enough, for for society for america it's very easy to dismiss it you know i i fully recognize that that this behavior never do i claim that this was that rises to the level of a sexual assault or mm. or anything of that nature what i am saying is that it's completely inappropriate that it does not belong in any kind of a professional setting much less in politics and that is something that we should consider when we are talking about the background of a person who is considering running for president. Did you have any conversations about what happened with any presidential campaign before you wrote that piece uh, no. for the cut? No, you haven't talked to anybody. No. Um, no. Vice President Biden is widely expected to announce a run for president in the coming weeks. You say that that is why you decided to speak out now. Do you think that this is disqualifying for him? For me, it's disqualifying. I think it's up to everybody else to make that decision, considering, again, the entire scope of his background, of um, the positions that he's taken. For me, it's this isn't the only problematic thing. I think that his response to the way in which he handled the Anita, Anita Hill um, hearing was completely also inappropriate and lacked empathy and, frankly, lacked accountability, you know, saying that he wishes that there was something more he could have done, I think is just... It's just, again, it's just a complete lack of accountability. You were the chair. You were the chair of that hearing, and you could have done anything you wanted. So, I, you know, there, in, in addition to, you know, previous anti-abortion positions that he's taken, et cetera, I find a lot of his background problematic, but that's for me personally. So, and, and, and what I think is also important and part of the reason why I felt a little bit less pressure in terms of speaking out is that we are often pressured to keep our mouths shut about anything. We, as as you know, party loyalists, as um, party stalwarts, as um, our foot soldiers for the party, we are expected to uh, quote unquote keep our dirty laundry um, mm -hmm. to ourselves, and it's always in service to the party. And and in this case. There are so many more incredible candidates that are just as likely and, and I believe are competent and amazing and can beat Donald Trump. And so I did feel like a little, I felt a little less pressure in terms of feeling like I could speak out because we have options. We so, have options. And I don't feel pressured to, to stay quiet and just take one for the team the way in which we're always asked to do and never speak out about the things that we believe are wrong. The co-founder of the Latina Victory Project, uh, Henry Munoz, who organized this event in November 2014, he released a statement that I know you've seen. It says in part, quote, at no time were these two leaders, you and the vice president, alone together, and I and the organization I co-founded and those in attendance do not believe that circumstances support allegations that such an event took place, unquote. What's your response to that? 
I think you left out the most important part of that quote, which is he says that he doesn't believe that the circumstances um, supported that because the premise of his statement is that we were never alone. Mm -hmm. That's literally what that statement says. That He asked everyone that him and I were never alone. And therefore, because we were never alone, that could have never happened. And you never claimed that you were alone. Right. No, of course, that that statement is entirely irrelevant. That literally has no application. Henry needs to go back and actually read my piece because I never claimed that I was alone with him. In fact, I very clearly say that this occurred in the chaos of of a rally. Eva was in front of me. He was behind me. And and frankly, there is so many, so many more documented instances of him doing the exact same thing that, you know, to me, whether you believe me or not, um, isn't as important as literally taking a look at the entire history of his behavior because it's out there. And it's and this is something that we have known for a long time, Jake. This isn't something that's new. So my last question for you, Assemblywoman Flores, and I do want to take a moment to acknowledge it's not easy to do what you're doing. And and I thank you for coming on and having the courage to do so. But what are you looking for from the vice president here, Vice President Biden? Are you looking for an apology? Are you looking for him to change his behavior? What's the end game here? What do you want? Absolutely. I would. Yes, of course, I want him to change his behavior and I want him to acknowledge that it was wrong. And I want this to be a bigger discussion about how there is no accountability structure within our political space, either for for instances in which women feel um, that there was inappropriate behavior or more serious instances in allegations of sexual assault, et cetera. We are we are not protected in politics. And and frankly, on a much larger scale, we also need to have a conversation about powerful men feeling that they have um, that they have the right to invade a woman's space whenever they'd like. This really is about women feeling like we have agency. We if we don't want you to touch us, then don't touch us. If there isn't a personal relationship, if there isn't a history there, if this is inappropriate, if he if this same situation occurred in a work setting and a CEO came up to a female staffer and did the exact same thing, that staffer would be able to complain to someone. Mm-hmm. That staffer would say, this was very weird and I, it made me feel very uncomfortable and he needs to stop doing this. And if that CEO continued that behavior and that was a pattern in practice, that would be a sexual harassment claim. Assembly so won- that, there needs to be that level of accountability in our political system and also just generally speaking now as we move forward, women should have agency in their own personal space and on their own bodies. Assemblywoman Flores, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jake. My next guest.